Hello and welcome. Please pause the video and try this problem on your own. Let's read the problem together. What is the value of x in the equation x minus 2 divided by 3 plus 1 sixth equals 5 sixths? Um, so here they're asking you to solve for x. And I think here you might be a little bit intimidated by the fact that we've got these fractions here. And what's really nice about this problem is that we can instantly get rid of all of those denominators that might be intimidating you. So we can get rid of this thirds right here, dividing by three. We can get rid of the sixth and turn it into a whole number. And likewise, you can get rid of the, this five sixth, the sixth here. So how do we do that? In general, if you want to get rid of your fraction denominators, what you can do is multiply by the least common multiple. So here, what are our numbers? Our numbers are 3 and 6, right? And 3 and 6 are the two types of denominators we have, so let's try to find the least common multiple of them. Well, uh, multiples, right? Take your number and multiply it by whole numbers, and these both go into 6, so that's actually our least common multiple, right? 3 times 2 is 6. That's the second multiple of 3. Third, if you count 0 as the first. And then it is the first multiple of 6 or second if you're using zero as the first, although you wouldn't usually do that. Usually it's just um, the first multiple is a number times one. So here, our least common multiple of six. Now, why, does, why is this awesome? Well, watch what happens when we multiply by the least common multiple of these three denominators. So let's multiply everything by six. What's gonna happen? Let's move our little LCM notation right here. Oh, we don't need that right over here. Okay. So 6 times x minus 2 over 3, that'll be our first product, right? Then we have to, we have to multiply every term by 6. So here, addition separates um, the left side of the equation, the side on the left with the equal sign, to two terms. So we have to also multiply 1 6 by 6 to keep the equation balanced. And on the right-hand side, multiply 6 by 5 6. So this is going to be awesome because, let's start on this right here, 6 times 5 6 is what? 6 times 5 is 30, divided by 6 is just 5. In other words, it's just the numerator here, right? 5. Why? Because 6 times 5, then divided by 6, if we write it this way, 6 times 5, then divided by 6, right? Could also be thought of, if we use our commutative property, or associative property, excuse me, as 6 times 1 6 or divided by 6. In other words, we can group these two things here, associate them first, then that times 5. In other words, 6 over 6 is just 1, it's 1 times 5. Usually you wouldn't write it out this way, but you can identify as 6 over 6 is just 1. They, they cancel out, we say. They cancel out to 1, which is the identity element in multiplication and makes no difference in your product, and the result is just 5. So in general, what's happening here with back in our equation, is that when we multiply by 6, we can cancel it out with our denominator, and all that will remain is the numerator, if the denominator, 6, is equal to our least common multiple, which it is here. So 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 1 is 6, divided by 6 is 1, or you could say the 6 is canceled out to 1. And already, this is becoming a much friendlier problem. 1. That's my 1. Sorry. Plus, what's going to happen over here? Well, this time, 6... Um, is being divided by 3, right? Instead of 6 being divided by itself, it's being divided by 3. So 6 over 3 is just 2. So 6 divided by 3 is just 2. And that 2 stays in your numerator because the 6 is larger, right? If you think about what's happening here, if I just write this on the side, um, it's 6 times x minus 2 times 1 third, or divided by 3. Divided by 3 and times 1 third are equivalent. Can change the order and multiply 6 by a third first, so it's 6 divided by 3, or 6 times 1 third, those are interchangeable, times x minus 2. And that becomes 2 times x minus 2, which is exactly what we have here. And now I think we have a much more manageable problem. So I'm going to rewrite it because it's looking a little bit sloppy here. 2 times x minus 2 plus 1 equals 5. Uh, before I distribute, I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. Um, which is my preference, you can distribute first if you want, and that gives us 2 times x minus 2, 1 minus 1 is 0, and 5 minus 1 is 4. Now I could distribute the 2, or divide by 2 on both sides, let me show you both approaches, 
so you have more flexibility. So 2 times x minus 2 equals 4, and 2 times x minus 2 equals 4 over here. Let's solve it in two different ways for fun. Here, let's divide everything by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 times x minus 2 divided by 2, again, those 2's will cancel out, just like before. It's just like the last situation, right? 2 divided by 2 is 1, and then x minus 2 remains. We add 2 to both sides, and then we get x, these 2's cancel out, negative 2, positive 2, those are opposites, and 2 plus 2 is 4, so x is 4. In this situation, we'll get the same result, we'll just solve it in a different way. Instead of dividing by 2, I'll distribute the 2. And you would distribute the 2 if dividing by 2 uh, is, is if this number here, this um, factor, is not a, um, also a factor of every other number you're working with. In other words, 2 goes into 4, so this division of 2 works nicely. If this number was 5, uh, you might want to avoid that um, if you want to avoid decimals or fractions here. So we multiply 2 by x, it's 2x. 2 by negative 2, don't forget that's negative 2, that's negative 4 equals 4. We add 4 to both sides, and now what happens? We have 2x equals 8. Divide by 2 on both sides, solve for x, and x equals 4. Um, and Either, either way, it's obviously totally fine. Now, after doing all of this, we know our answer is 4, choice 1. And if you have time and energy, uh, plug your answer in, whatever you think it is, into the equation to see that it works, and we'll do it here. So 4 minus 2 divided by 3 plus 1 sixth, does that equal 5 six? It needs to equal 5 six, um, otherwise you have the wrong answer. So 4 minus 2 is 2, over 3 is 2 thirds, plus one-sixth. What's two-thirds plus one-sixth? Well, two-thirds, I'll multiply the numerator and denominator by two because I want to get a common denominator. I want to add both fractions in terms of sixths. So that's four over six. Plus one-sixth, that's five-sixths. All right, we add our numerators. So in other words, this tells us when x is four, this equation is balanced. So that's the correct answer. Thanks.